In today's video, we're going to go down a deep, deep rabbit hole and use every single pouring medium we've ever bought in one magical recipe. Not only will I show you step by step how to perform a few special techniques, but also teach you step by step how to mix those paints. So sit back, get your notepads out, and let's get started. So let me ask you a question. How many of you out there have all of these products? I bet you a lot. Leave a comment in the description and let me know if you're overflowing with items to make acrylic pouring mediums with. <laughs> I mean, we've tried everything from the house paints to the flow trial to the Australian flow to the European flow. I mean, it's all over the place. Satin enamels, blah, 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 blah. So... <laughs> I thought today I would try an experiment. What would happen if we combined all of these products together to do an acrylic pour? Would we get something magical? Well, I'm about to show you that right now. So to get started, first we're going to need a cup so I can give you an exact measurement of what I'm doing. And then I'm going to show you step by step how to mix the paints, blah, 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 all of that good stuff. And hopefully we will end up with a masterpiece. So first things first, I have here these measuring cups I get off of Amazon. I usually use them for resin mixing, but they're going to come in handy for today's video. So I am going to add in two ounces of each product. First up will be the Liquitex pouring medium. Two ounces. Actually, I'm gonna need a lot more product than that. So let me add in four ounces of each product. If you're in another country and don't use ounces, just go on to Google and find a, a converter, like ounces to uh, mil, milligrams or whatever it is that you're using. And I have such a little bit left of this Liquitex. we're going to do 4.5 ounces of each product because I want to throw this bottle away. So it's right at 4.5. All right. So we have 4.5 of that. I'm going to take that and I'm going to dump it into my reusable palm bottle here that I have. I save these juice bottles because uh, they come in handy. Just going to Pour that right in there. So 4.5 ounces of that. 4.5 ounces of untinted house paint. I have the picture so you can see the brand on the screen now. All right, 4.5 ounces of that. Try not to pour down the side of the bottle like I'm doing. Next up, 4.5 ounces of Joe Sonia Gloss Varnish. So next we'll do Australian Flow Troll, four and a half ounces. Four and a half ounces of Owatrol, Owatrol. And last, but definitely not least, American Floetrol. Now we'll put the lid on, give it a good shaking. And that is our homemade pouring medium for today's video. Typically, I don't measure. I put a squeeze of color in the cup. I pour the, the uh, pouring medium until the cup's about half full. I mix it. And then I add my water 
to get it to the right consistency. However, today I'm going to measure for you so you have an exact measurement. I will tell you though, make sure you use a medium body to paint or else the measurements aren't gonna be close, all right? If you're struggling with consistency, go to my description of this video, click on the link for the consistency video, watch that video, go into the description of that video, print out one of those free downloadable and printable charts and the rest will be a cakewalk because I show you the different consistencies for all acrylic pouring techniques. It's a huge help. It allows me to translate through the screen to you how thick my paints really are. All right, but see already I'm about to screw up and not measure for you. So turn your scale on if you have one. Tear it out so it's at zero. And then I'm going to show you. So that's 0.25 ounces of paint. You want to put approximately double that amount. But we'll see how much this uh, scale tells us it is that I'm actually adding in. So I'm going to tear it. Double would be 0 0.50. So let me pour this and tell you where I would stop. See, I'm already over. That's 0.75. I would fill this up at least that much. Leave a little room to add water and to mix. So 1.80 of this pouring medium, I just added to the 0.25 ounces of paint. I could use less of this, but then I have to add more water. And when you add more water to thin the paint down, it's going to, you know, you got to be careful if you're using a cheaper quality paint, they could crack over the years. The, the paint could crack on the canvas. If you use a better quality paint, you can add a little more water. I think the general rule is no more than 30% water, you know, 30% of whatever volume of paint that you use. So whatever 30% of 0.25 would have been, they say no more than that amount of water, but I just use a little more pouring medium and less water. I feel more comfortable that way. Plus, using more pouring medium, you're going to create a larger volume of paint of that color. If I go ahead, let me do a really quick example for you. If I were to go ahead and put about the same amount of paint in here, And then just a little bit of that pouring medium. We'll make it an evil, um, evil, even. Well, I tried to get it to 50, but it went over a little bit. You get my point though. It's a lot less pouring medium, okay? If I go and do that, the, the color is going to work exactly the same. You're gonna get the same effects, everything else. However, Once I add the water to it, you're going to see that I'm not going to end up with nearly as much paint as I will by adding more pouring medium to the color. Okay, so that's it. That's all I'm ending up with. Not even a half a cup if I don't use more of the pouring medium. But again, it will work the same. It's just we're not creating enough bulk. Whereas with this one, I have a full cup of it after I add the water in. So first, let me mix it up. And honestly, this, this color right here with this pouring medium needs very little water. So what I'll do is I'll tear this out and now I'll show you exactly how much water. Ten drops and it didn't even register on there. So that's how little water I'm using with this one here. 
flows off the stick, leaves a little mound, and then disappears. All right? And you can see this one here too. Same thing. Just we created a lot less. So that's why people use more pouring medium and why the measurement really doesn't matter. If I'm being honest with you. This paint here is going to create the same effects as this one does. So that's how my Amsterdam paints are going to be mixed up today. Uh, if you're using Artist Loft or Liquitex, they're all about the same uh, in body. So it's going to be very close. Again, use that consistency guide if you don't know what an average consistency for an average acrylic pour is. Now my white is going to be mixed a little different. For my white, I'm going to be using Artist Loft uh, Academic Level 1, which is a soft body paint. Here's the thing. Everybody always asks me, will it work with this brand? Will it work with that brand? I don't know. You have to test yourself. I can't possibly test all the different brands of paints. I can only tell you what I'm using today works or doesn't work, okay? I have exactly four ounces of paint. I'm going to put half of that amount of satin enamels in. So I'm going to put two ounces of satin enamels in my white. A little over 205, but that's okay. I'm going to mix those together so that they have a, a chance to marry each other. I'm going to tear that out. I'm going to take some American Flow Troll. Put in eight ounces of American Flow Troll. Give it a good mix. And then I'm going to slowly add water to it until it starts to thin down a little bit to match my colors. So what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna tear this. I'm gonna start off with a half an ounce of water. So 0 0.50. And that's perfect. Okay, so that's how I'm mixing the paints today. You saw me do the colors. You saw me make the homemade pouring medium. You saw me do the white. I'm going to set up now, and I'm going to test this out, and hopefully we're going to get something spectacular. All right, so I'm going to be doing two tests today. First test, I want to try adding the satin enamel mixture into the special pouring medium while I'm loading up my cup here. So we're going to do a straight pour with a little bit of a ring pour just to see if we get any special effects out of this. So that was primary yellow I added. This is Pyrrole Red. These are all Amsterdam brand paints and uh, you can use whatever medium body paint that you want to use. So I'm just slowly pouring it down the side of the cup so that the paints land on top of each other like a parfait. What I will do is I'll alternate when I add the white in. So for example, I'm now pouring in purple and I really didn't want the purple meshing with the red and the yellow because you could create mud when purple mixes with especially yellow. Um, so I put a little layer of white there to keep them kind of separated, but you'll notice I poured the yellow and the red together because I know if those two blend together, I could potentially end up with some 
orange in my painting without even using that color. I also used gold. I used a um, teal. I used a lime green color. Of course, I'm putting all of these color names on the screen for you so that you know what I used. What a beautiful cup of paint. I hope that's not too much white on the bottom. <gasps> if it is, whatever. So now I'm just going to pour it straight into the center of the canvas. Just like so. If you want to change the design, you can. You could start swirling a little bit. The end of the cup is always the prettiest part. You don't want to let it drip if you can help it. Try to catch it. Now I'm going to have a ton of bubbles because I just mixed the paints. When you mix your paints, you should always try to wait a few hours before you pour them so the air has a chance to rise. But look how pretty that is. So let me just show you that quick. So we're already getting some special effects happening here. So what I'm going to do is give it a torch Unfortunately, I'm probably going to get a bunch of white little pin marks because, again, I didn't let the paint sit. So here we go. See that? All those little marks that just showed up. That's what's going to happen when you mix your paints and use them right away. So I think I'll go this way first. Let's just stretch it around and see what happens. I'll go in a nice, slow, circular motion until it starts going over the edges. And then I will decide what to do with the composition. See, it's starting to go over slowly. You know, hindsight is twenty twenty. I wish I had reserved that blue edge with the nice big red cells that were popping up. However, when you're doing these things, a lot of times you're so focused on one area that you don't see the awesome areas that you're tilting off. Do we have anything fantastic doing it this way? Not really. Uh, we got some cells popping up, like this is a cell. These are cells. Whenever there's a ring with color inside of color, that's a cell. It's nothing, nothing to write home about. I mean, it performed well as a pouring medium, but I'm not seeing anything that would knock my socks off or make me clutch my pearls. So let me put this one to the side and let's use it in a different way now and see how it behaves. All right, so for test two, we're going to take our satin and enamel mixture and pour it onto our canvas, tilt it all around, and then I'm going to do a simple puddle pour using the same colors as before, just not all of them. I'm going to do a uh, swipe using the satin enamel white just to see if there was any kind of strange reaction to this recipe. Now, of course, I know about the pearl cell recipe and I could thin this satin enamel down very, very thin and, you know, mix my paints with just some Liquitex and Floetrol and get that kind of effect. But that wasn't the point of this video. The point of this video was to make a, you know, everything but the kitchen sink type of a recipe and test it out to see if it did anything different than what we're used to seeing. As you can see here, 
it was a total dud. Now, <laughs> however, there is one saving grace for acrylic pouring. I don't care what anyone says. If you have this one thing on hand, you can save any painting you want with it. So let me show you the most important product in all of acrylic pouring that you must have in your acrylic pouring toolbox. So again, we got zero Shapiro. I think I managed to make the one pouring medium in acrylic pouring that does not promote cells. <laughs> so if you don't like cells, this is the one for you. <laughs> anyway, I have one more thing to test. And if this doesn't work, nothing will. I wanted to see if it would create something different than what we're used to seeing. So on the back of my palette knife <laughs> goes some Australian Floetrol that's mixed with carbon black paint by Golden. Let's give it a try and see what happens. Uh, let's come this way. And I'll be damned. <laughs> I'm telling you that Australian Floetrol is the answer to everything. Especially if you want this kind of reaction in your art. So I kind of had a feeling that was going to happen because this stuff is liquid gold. That's why it's so expensive. But you can get it with a discount through my channel. So I just performed a few more swipes just playing around. I'm not really too concerned about creating art today. The purpose of this video was to A, help you with measuring and B, just see if we made a mishmash recipe here. What would happen? And as you can see, uh, without the Australian flow trial, it was pretty much just a average acrylic pour recipe. I mean, it didn't even create cells. So again, though, acrylic pouring is a, a funny thing. You know, you can alter those paints just a little tiny bit with water and they can produce something totally different. So my advice to you is to just play around test different things with different things and you know just get into it find your inner scientist and have some fun with it can i just say this palette is absolutely gorgeous i'm gonna have to go back and see exactly what colors i used and how i layered them because i love this palette so now there was a cool effect that i got by doing the swipe on top of the satin enamels and if you look at it right here this little pink strip of air of cells there were really really cool looking and I have that cloudy look to the cells and lacing so you know that's a little different than when you just use the bloom recipe it's got more of a cloudy hazy look to it a more delicate um pattern the colors are more softer looking. So I was happy with that. So, you know, in the end, it wasn't a fail altogether. It, you know, I can use this recipe if I want this specific look in the future. But um, yeah, just, you know, give everything a try and see what you can come up with. So I'm just going to kind of twist this around and tilt it. I'm just whatever comes out of it comes out of it at this point i like the palette so much though that i'm going to probably just let it dry and try to do some resin art on top of it um so i'm not really worried too much about distorting the cells when i'm lacing um sorry when i'm tilting and all that we'll just let it dry and move on to the next one which by the way is next sunday 3 30 p.m eastern standard time and you're not going to want to miss that one Boy, do I have a pretty painting to show you. So thank you for joining me today. Don't forget to check out the description for coupons on products to save you some cash and also ways to follow me on social media. I love you all. Thank you so, so very much for joining me. And until the next one, happy pouring.